Hey, Carl, uh, have you heard that Daft Punk have broke up? Yeah. A lot, actually. <laughs> For much of their career, the French electronica duo Daft Punk cultivated and maintained an elaborate robotic facade. A facade that has since gone on to become one of the most enduring visuals in all of modern music, and one that the band initially committed so hard to, it annoyed the fuck out of a bunch of music journalists trying to talk to them. So Carl, uh, Daft Punk haven't always been like weird robot men? Yeah, that's a fact that comes as a surprise to a lot of people. Uh, because when you say Daft Punk, that people immediately think of like, you know, two guys in robot costumes. And they haven't always been robots, although they have, or they were, I should say, you know, because the band's no longer together, um, were robots for longer than they weren't. And um, they like started embracing the gimmick in around 2001. That was a couple of years after they'd already formed as a band and been established musically. But they were quite lucky in a sense, I suppose, that um, the reveal of their robotic alter egos, which we'll get to in a moment, coincided with the release of Homework, I think it was, in 2001. So, you know, their, their biggest hit, the thing that put them on the radar, also happened to coincide with them adopting um, these robotic alter egos. And that's what cemented that visual in the public's mind. But when they first formed, they would happily perform and give interviews without... Um, any sort of disguise on them um, right up until the time where they started getting a little bit famous and they realized oh god being famous kind of sucks and they became notably quite camera shy and would go to somewhat extreme methods to conceal their identity um, when performing and giving interviews um, for example Lucas you're on the uh, the original article right now yes yeah I'm at the top as usual yeah okay so just scroll down a little bit and look at the uh, picture of Daft Punk in one of their early interviews <laughs> what is that what <laughs> they've got fucking I don't know, curtains on their faces. Yeah, they're wearing just like um, thick cloth bags over their head. They just put bag. They used to do that as well. They used to put um, uh, plastic or cloth bags over their heads. Um, they would wear Halloween masks. Or sometimes they would just face the other way and refuse to turn around. <laughs> um, I think for one photo shoot, they even just cover their faces in shaving cream. Oh my god! Like they just got shaving cream shoved it all over their faces, so like, you know their features could not be distinguished. I mean, I guess that works, but like, yeah, whacking shaving cream on your face. Every single time you've got to be photographed, does sound like a bit of a ball ache. Yeah, and uh, the the band decided that a more permanent solution um, to the problem of not wanting to have their faces um, visible um, in during performances and interviews and things like that um, was required, which resulted in them coming up with the idea of well, let's just be robots. Let's just make cool robot outfits and wear those. And they contracted some of their arty farty French friends to uh, design them both um, some cool robot costumes, which were influenced by a couple of things. The most notable being um, the guy from the day the earth stood still, did the robot in that. And I think the other one was partly influenced by the design of um, earlier spacesuits, which is why it ended up having, like, initially that golden mirror sheen on the front. The long and short of it is they decided, fuck it, we're going to become robots. But what they didn't do is tell anyone that they were going to become robots. <laughs> and that's very important because a lot of journalists weren't expecting Daft Punk to rock up to the interviews uh, regarding their new album Homework, Dress Like Robots, which is when the band decided, let's have some fun pretending to be robots. Okay, so they're just on, I guess, like their press tour for their new album, yes. but they just turned up as robots? Yes, they did. And to make it even better, um, the conceptualization and design and eventual production of those robotic costumes um, were done completely in secret. And I believe even to this day, the exact measurements and specifications of those original helmets are not known because the band made the artist sign NDAs. That was to stop fans from being able to construct their own. And there's a great quote from one of the members of Daft Punk where they've like, you know, been handed the, the replicas and the knockoffs and stuff and gone, they're just never quite right. There's always something about them that's not quite right. And that lets us know that, like, you know, our artist friends haven't, you know, just fucked us off and sold the designs on eBay or something. <laughs> yeah, that reminds me of, like, when you got the Halo 3, like, legendary edition with the Mjolnir don't, helmet. Don't, do not even fucking get me started on that fast. <laughs> Lucas, explain, because it's going to piss me off. There's a version of Halo 3 that came with Master Chief's helmet, mm -hmm. and it was like promoted as I don't know if they outwardly stated, they didn't but it know, seemed but... as though it would be a wearable Master Chief helmet. 
And you're right, Lucas, it wasn't advertised as saying it came with a, a wearable Master Chief helmet because it didn't need to, because that's what everyone assumed, because why the fuck would you not make it wearable? <laughs> it was wearable for your car. Anyway, as mentioned, Daft Punk constructed these outfits in complete secrecy, and nobody, save for, right, you know, their close friends and confidants, knew that they were going to rock up to their promotional tour for that album, Dress Like Robots. And it's noted that people conducting interviews with the band and doing stuff like photo shoots for magazine spreads were just baffled because they didn't know what to make of it. Because today, everyone knows Daft Punk. Mm. You see, that, you see that, like, that's Daft Punk. But imagine, just go back, like, what, 20 years? Yeah. And imagine you're sat, like, waiting for an interview and you're told, like, Daft Punk's coming in. So it's, a, it's an electronic band, they're getting pretty big, they've got a new album, they're going to talk about it, and two fucking robots walk in. And something I want to get across to people watching at home is that the pictures behind me do not do the quality, sophistication, and swagginess of the Daft Punk helmets justice because all of them contained fully integrated LED displays that could be customised by the person wearing them and could be controlled via controls in the gauntlets of the costumes. Also, I think it's really important to note that um, the helmets were air-conditioned. And one of the reasons I fucking love Daft Punk is because they committed so hard to the bit. In one of the first interviews they ever gave, when they were wearing the costumes, they were asked, so, so, so what's the deal? They responded, uh, there was an accident in the studio, uh, we woke up and we were robots and decided to roll with it. <laughs> and the full quote would be below me in a fact bar, but just the idea of, so what's going on? There was an accident. We are robots now. Can we please move on? And Lucas, if you were that interviewer, would you let that go? I, I think I'd go. I'd, I'd have to fully embrace it, Carl. Well, no, well, you're a rare one then, because interviewers did not let it go, Lucas, because they, they needed to know why the robots. And Daft Punk, to their credit, every time they were asked in those first couple of interviews after the reveal of their new automaton alter egos, fully committed to know we are robots and even when journalists tried to trip them up by saying oh so you're gonna be wearing the costumes on stage it's like it's not a costume i am a robot <laughs> it's just like imagine how infuriating that would be oh god yeah i think i am as you say a rare exception because i think i'd be sitting there just like so what is it like to be a robot it, now yeah yeah, I'm so upset that no journalist did that, but like, obviously they try to do their journalistic diligence and they want to ask, like, oh, so are these costumes going to be a mainstay of your, your your artistry now? It's like, what do you mean? We're not wearing costumes. I'm a robot underneath. So it reminds me a little bit of when Daft Punk were at the VMAs, I think it was, and for some inexplicable reason, the cameraman kept cutting to Daft Punk for reaction shots. <laughs> it's like, they're fucking robots! <laughs> Okay, Carl, but like these interviews, at some point they must have just fucked up and let slip something, right? Yeah, or just started to talk about their music. And no, they remained heroically committed to the bit for about a decade and a half. Because it wasn't until about like 2016 when they actually started opening up about why they pretended to be robots. And in almost every other interview they gave before that, when asked, would just say, we are robots. For example, if they ever got asked about their helmets, like, oh, so it's to get hot under the helmet, they'd just respond, there's nothing under the helmet, I am a robot. Again, I adore, because, yeah, I'd want to know what's it like under the helmet. At the same time, I, it's so funny that they're just like, no, I'm a robot, fuck you. And I can only imagine they gave all these responses as, like, smirking from ear to ear. Oh, yeah, I presume so. Like, underneath the helmet, they're, like, smirking. Like, they've got big old grins on their face. Like, huge, shitty, in Daft Punk grins. Because, of course, it's, like, one of the most iconic elements of their, like, you know, just artistry is those costumes. And they just, like, outright refuse to give a straight answer about their origins or why they wore them. But like I said, for over a decade, it was only in, like, the mid-2010s when they started to, like, you know, explain the reasoning behind it. So, yeah, we value our privacy. But at the same time, acknowledge that they are performers, so they wanted to, like, you know, disguise their appearance in a way that people found entertaining. But to go back in time just one more time, yes, I did say that, let's move on. One thing I want to mention that Daft Punk did, because this is fucking hilarious. As mentioned, back in 2001, nobody knew that Daft Punk had just decided we're robots now. And they turned up to all these interviews and just baffled the shit out of their interviews. But they also did a number of photo shoots which were similarly um, surreal experiences for the photographers because they were told, oh, you're going to go take pictures of a band? And then robots turned up. <laughs> and for one, um, 
quite memorable spread for a magazine. Um, the theme was a day in the life of Daft Punk. Because he's like, okay, so what do I, you know, what, what, you know, the, the biggest up and coming uh, musicians in the industry right now, what do they do on a, like, you know, with their day off? Well, Daft Punk turned up dressed like robots. And as mentioned, they took their privacy very seriously. So what the band did is invited the photographer to a mansion in LA that they'd filled with members of a local nudist colony. And they stood in the middle of the room in full robot outfits as everyone just stripped off naked and said, here you go. What? But as mentioned, like the band did eventually reveal why they wore the outfits. And the reasoning was quite boring. It's like, you know, we just don't want people to know what we look like. And even on those rare occasions where people managed to get the band to sit down and talk to them, because they really did not like giving interviews, and it was noted as being easier to find rocking horse shit than it was time to interview Daft Punk. And during those very rare interviews, if you got them to speak honestly about why they wore the outfits, they would still do it with their tongue in their cheek. For example, in 2016, they had an interview with Rolling Stone, where they finally revealed the reasoning for wearing those outfits after 15 fucking years, and as mentioned, you know, to guard their privacy. And even then, Daft Punk still managed to commit to the gimmicks. After explaining, yeah, we wear these outfits, and so people on the street don't recognise us because we um, uh, greatly value our privacy. They added, we are aware that it would not be exciting for humanity to see our features. <laughs> <laughs> so even when they're giving like, you know, an actual explanation, they still refer to themselves as being apart from humanity because they're robots. Oh, what a gimmick. I love it. So far away, Lucas, did you know that Daft Punk broke up? Wait, what? Did they? Hmm. So should we explain that? Because like, I, I got, it's obviously you're not here, you're far away, hence far away Lucas, but I got just such a fucking dirty look on my face and you said, I'm like, yeah. So if it wasn't evident from the way I talked during this video, I adore Daft Punk. I fucking love the fact that their like, gimmick is being robots and I love all their songs. And we've talked about them once before on the channel and made reference to them in many other videos. And um, when the band broke up, I think me and you were streaming or recording something that day, Lucas. Uh, yeah, I think Maybe. in the evening we were streaming. Uh, what did I say to you um, when I saw the news that Daft Punk had broken up? You were just like, oh my god, no, I'm not going to stop hearing about this for the next, like, three days. And that's because I knew that that's all I was going to get asked about by fans of the channel when we were streaming and on Twitter and stuff for the next week and a half. And boy, was I right. And do you remember off the top of your head how many times I got asked about that over the course of, like, a two-hour stream? Yeah, so we were playing, I think it was Super Smash Bros. we were playing, you just went, you know what, I'm going to count up how many times I get told that Daft Punk have broke up or get asked about it. And I think yeah. by the end of the night, it was like 16 times in a short stream. Yeah, and keep in mind as well that this news trended worldwide on Twitter the entire day. And I'm just going to give people a pro tip for the future. If something trends worldwide on Twitter all day, Yes, I heard about it. <laughs> and I would love to be a fly on the wall or one of the people who joined that stream to ask, did you hear about Daft Punk? Because something we should clarify is, um, prior to starting that stream that evening, because me and Lucas both knew it's all we're going to be asked about, we changed our rules to say, don't ask about Daft Punk. So people, <laughs> when they click to chat, have to click past the rule that says, we know about Daft Punk breaking up, don't talk about it. And they go, okay, yeah. Carl, did you know about Daft Punk? And it still happened 16 times in a row. And I would just love to have a glimpse into the series of actions that led to that happening. And the person booted up their computer like, oh no, Daft Punk have broken up. I know who needs to know this. Carl, oh, he's in like hour two of his stream. There's a hundred people in chat. But I better know what no one's brought up. It's Daft Punk. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, oh, click this. What does this say? Don't ask. No, no, no. there's no time. There's no time to read these rules. Carl needs to know. <laughs> It's just, it's simultaneously baffling and infuriating to deal with. It's just one of those things I like to accept as being part of being online and people thinking that they know me really well. Like, uh, it's just like an extension of the parasocial relationship people have with uh, myself and uh, the other members of the channel. People were genuinely sending me messages of condolence about that. But I got actual messages of people, I'm really sorry to be the one who has to tell you this, Carl, but Daft Punk have broken up. It's like, one, I know, two, the fuck are you, and three, it's a band. I, I'm good, they're not going to make any more music, but the, the, my over-enthusiastic discussion about them in a video, like an edited video where I'm a more elevated version of my own personality, 
is not an accurate representation of me as a person. I'm not distraught and despondent because Daft Punk broke up. But the fact that people still felt like, they, they, oh, I need to be the one who tells him. I need to soften the blow by letting him know. <laughs>